Hey, caller, welcome to the show. How you doing? JG, what's the word, man? Uh, Auburn alumni, is that right? Yes, sir. My oh, man, what up, bro? Oh man, I'm just enjoying this stellar win over, uh, you know, pretty pretty good pretty good team there. Two Would touchdown be, victory, so. buddy. I mean, that's big. Yeah, man, that, that's a good football team right there. So uh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. It's tough to get them on the road, uh, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that was, you know, obviously Hunter already went over the <clears throat> the game, but uh, yeah, it's pretty much ugly. Uh, was ugly the whole way through. Uh, you know, Bo was about as bad as he looked all year. The saving grace was that, you know, five-star racehorse we got in the backfield that ran all over everyone in the back in the second half. But, I mean, it just it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. I mean, the score looks a lot better than any, anyone that watched that game. Um, you didn't come away feeling super terrific about the performance. No. Uh, so, you know, that's – you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, I, I I said it before. I'll say it again. I I don't see how today's performance, or especially after watching it, but I don't see how the outcome of a game against now a two and seven Mississippi, Mississippi State squad that has some like fifty scholarship players left on it is the determining factor on eight years of data. I don't see how this is the oh he won he stays oh he lost he goes. I don't see how that. I don't see how it computes. Um, you know, to echo what Hunter said, um, I don't see any way if you feel that Auburn is a team that should be challenging for championships and challenging the Georgias and the Alabamas and the Floridas and the LSUs and the A&Ms. I don't see how you can stay on with Gus any longer than we have. I don't – there is no momentum in the program. Uh, and, again – you got so much hard data. I mean, the recurring theme on the broadcast and everything is how Gus is proverbially on the hot seat. So if he's proverbially on the hot seat, then that means by definition you're already at a disadvantage uh, in recruiting because every every other coach is out there saying, you know, he's probably going to be gone after this year. You're 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 going to have a new position coach. You're going to have a new staff. Yeah. Uh, but beside that, I mean, we could go over the the record he's got on the road. He's never won at our rivals ever, um, and then he has an abysmal record now even overall um uh, against all of them well they could put those uh, uh so, anxieties to rest so they just give him an extension like go ahead and extend him out another two or three years and then they, those kids don't have to worry about it no that'd be great <laughs> man and then we could just really get solidified on like softball and soccer and i don't know whatever the, what are the false in real sports do we have going on <laughs> Robert, we could start advertising uh exactly no but i i just feel like you know, it, it, there is no momentum. There's no, there's nothing to sell anybody on. There's no excitement. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I was sitting there. You know, I had the game on, but I was sitting here draining it. And then I'm watching the LSU game. And I, I'll tell you the other thing. Watching Bruce, I had no desire to switch over. I watched that whole game till the end. Yeah, watched Vanilla Killa, you know, get another dub, uh, running point, and didn't even care about the game. And it's. To me, you know, again, I'm 43. I'll be 43 New Year's Eve. I grew up in the 80s. I grew up with Coach Die. I grew up, you know, that was what I had in the elementary school growing up and high school. And, you know, pretty much all my, my, my life I've expected Auburn to compete and win against the big boys in the league. Not every game, but we hold our own. And uh, we're not holding our own with the top level anymore. We're just not. The only, you know, we beat LSU, but they're abysmal. Outside of the game ninth and in Gainesville, this is the worst LSU team in 25 years. We should beat them. Yeah. Um, that's that shouldn't even be a question. Uh, we shouldn't be excited about being a two and seven Mississippi State team by two touchdowns. Uh, and I'm really getting tired of, you know, can you know annual beatdowns like physical beatdowns by Georgia just about every season, uh, and then every other year getting decimated by Alabama. And uh, that's not changing with Gus. That's not changing. Uh, you know, switching out coordinators, there's on, on, only so many different shades of lipstick you can put on a pig, and it's still pig. And uh, that's pretty much what I feel like we're out here is you, you, you're, you, there's, there's nothing, there's no miraculous change. There's no tweak. There's no slight tweak to the Gus regime that we're going to be back to 2013. I mean, we've been on a down, we've been on a downhill climb ever since 2014. Outside of the, the November of 2017, 
about October, after that LSU game in October 2014, it has been a steady decline ever since then. Uh, and, you know, you brought it up, Jay, is um, th- there's no home run, and there isn't. But to me, um, we absolutely know we, what we have in guts, and we know it doesn't work. Um, and we know that the, the chasm is getting bigger. I mean, look around the league. Look at, look at A&M right now. They're absolutely going to parlay, regardless of if they get in the playoff or not, this is something they can now sell to, to recruits. Hey, look, we almost made the playoff or we made the playoff. Uh, they've already got all those facilities. Now he can start selling that, even though I, I'm not, I don't believe Jimbo's much of anything, but this is something they can sell. Uh, Florida, gradually going up. They've got stuff to sell. You know, LSU just won a title. Georgia's doing their thing. Bama's doing their thing. You know, we're already, what, sixth in the league right now? And that's with the current regime. So, you know, I, I just feel like we need to move on. Yeah. Uh, and as far as candidates, you know, I already mentioned in the chat, Eric Bieniemy is my dream coach, but it ain't happening. Uh, but I would love to get Bieniemy. Um, but of the actual candidates that you and, you know, a lot of the insiders anybody have mentioned, I'm fine with Napier. I'm fine with Cristobal. I'm not fine with Freeze. I like Freeze, but I'm like you. I don't see any way, unless you want the NCAA to set up like a covert headquarters <laughs> right outside of yeah. Mama Goldberg's, that you can have you and Bruce in, in on campus. I just don't see it happening. Um, if, if you're going between Billy and Mario, I mean, to me, you got to go with Mario. And it's for, no, he's not necessarily a slam dunk, but what is a slam dunk is his recruit, recruiting acumen. And, you know, we talked about what was the difference tonight, Jay, on, in the game? Okay. It was that five-star running back we had in the backfield. Yes. The guy that's a, he's a different dude. You've got to have the different dudes. Yep. And Mario can get the different dudes. Um, and the thought of Mario coming in with the experience of, you know, his ties down here, he's already got a, you know, a bell cow to run behind. You imagine what Mario can do as far as firming up our lines of scrimmage. Um, he's There's pieces already in place. There is some talent, but he can take it to the next level. And then the other aspect that, you know, we mentioned on the board is he knows where the bodies are buried in Tuscaloosa. He was a four-year coordinator. So the unspoken discussions that go on recruiting, you know, he's going to be prepared for that stuff. And, yeah. you know, any, that, that, that's something that, is, to me, it's a factor. I mean, it's not spoken about, but that, that should be a factor. Um, I would rather have, kind of like Kirby, I'd rather have a bunch of five stars and then we can figure out the offense and the defense with, you know, coordinators tweak that. But you can tweak when you got a bunch of tanks on the roster. And, and they don't right we're now. Past yeah. the point. Right. And we're past the point of selling with what we have to get more tanks. Uh, and the opponents have, you know, a library list or a, a grocery list of, of items they can use against us. So, you know, that, that's my feeling right now. It's, 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 it's got to change. And, and this game should have absolutely zero bearing. I agree all. with that. Um, at all. So. All right, brother. Solid call. Oh, great, no. great start for uh, our night here. Glad to have you calling in. Yeah, man. Hope, hoping we get some good news and uh, get some fresh blood coming in by tomorrow, hopefully. <laughs> right, we'll see, man. All right, brother. All right, man. See you, man. See ya. Uh, What's up, B Matt? Just cranking out a little story about this football game. Watching um, watching the big Oregon State Stanford battle here for uh, first place in our pick for this year. Oh, it's going to come down to that, huh? Yep, yep. Jeffrey's got um, Stanford, and Hunter's got Oregon State. And Stanford's up 24-21 with 12 minutes left in the fourth. Dang, it's coming down. Who are you pulling for? I'm pulling for uh, whoever, whatever keeps Gus here so everybody's so pissed. Well, I'm pulling for the Beavers because Jeffrey's already won three in a row, so he doesn't need to win again. Uh, listen, man, I mentioned this on the show. Uh, when Xavion Gapers got that two-point conversion, mm-hmm. I know you were jumping for joy, weren't you? I was thrilled, of course, and I was just impressed how Bo Nix was able to, you know, sort of slide it in that really tight window there. You know, uh, it was really tight. Impressive. He was wide open though. It was pretty loose little mm-hmm. coverage, wasn't it? I don't know. I thought it was pretty tight, but you know, I guess it's, you know, we can watch it again. Break um, it down. Listen, so we've got a lot of folks here on the show, a lot of people in the bunker that are really ready for Gus to go, and I don't think mm. that the dancing video. Have you seen the dancing video yet? Oh, yeah, I've seen it a couple times, yes. Uh, It didn't go over well. Uh, Your thoughts on Uh, Auburn celebrating like mad against a 2-7 and 
Mississippi State team. Why would people be upset about that? I mean, let, let's put this whole season in perspective, right? Just think what these players have been through over the last year, you know, having to go home, having to deal with COVID, having to spring canceled, having to have all these special rules they have to go through to try not to get, you know, a positive test and try to show up and all the injuries they've been through and all the, you know, games and practices and all that, you know, time that's been missed because of positive tests and, you know, everything they've been through to lose at home like they did in the fourth quarter against A&M and then come against Mississippi State and, you know, run over a team that doesn't allow, you know, teams to run against them and to do what they did and, and we're not, yeah, yeah, they should dance and, and celebrate and have fun. That was big. So I know people can be upset about six and four and yeah, it's not championship caliber certainly, but um, in perspective, if you put your place yourself in place of one of these players or coaches on this team, you dang straight they're going to be excited and they're going to celebrate and they're going to have fun tonight. Heck yeah! But that the win the win means nothing. I mean, they beat Mississippi State. They're terrible. Right from somebody who doesn't you know sits backwards and just looks at the records and you know all that. Sure, but you know I think for every player on this team and coach, it meant a lot. That's true. That's it was true. really important to them. And I mean, if it wasn't important to them, they would have gone there and gotten their butts kicked, right? Because I had a feeling that might happen because I, I was concerned this team was not motivated. And clearly they were. They looked like, you know, ASS on offense for three quarters. But defensively, they played their butts off for four quarters, sure and the did. offense finally woke up and got it done in the fourth. Yeah, let's talk about that defensive performance, dude. I mean, we, we, we laugh about how weird and foundering the offense was. But, dude, the defense locked those boys down. I mean, they didn't do anything. And it's the same defense that got their ass run over by Texas A&M just a week ago, right? They could have been demoralized. They could have been, you know, sort of quit on them. But instead, they come out with probably the best performance they've had all season or one of the best. I mean, six sacks. I didn't think this team was capable of getting six sacks all season, uh, more or less in one game, and that's a Mississippi State um, attack that they throw the ball quickly so they don't give up a bunch of sacks. And part of the reason for that was because I thought Auburn secondary had really tight coverage. I mean, they were knocking balls down. They had two interceptions. Uh, even some of the catches they made were, were, you know, with guys draped all over them. So I, I thought um, Kevin Steele had a great plan. He mixed it up. Um, you didn't know where Auburn was coming from. They did bring a linebacker or somebody on the blitz or something. And uh, I think it really affected their freshman quarterback. You know, you can see he's got some talent. Uh, but this was Auburn's night. Um, and, and they took advantage of his experience. Um, on the offensive side, really, there's only one guy of note. I mean, Tank had an absolute beast of a game. I know you've been a you've thought that he's been a beast ever since he had his first carry. It was yep. weird, and kind of you know, first half they didn't run him that much, even though he was running well. And the second half they just let him go, and he just he absolutely ate their lunch. Well, you know, I'm looking forward to your breakdown because you know, listening to Gus and Tank talk afterwards, um, they were talking how you know Mississippi State did some things in the first half to take some things away, but they knew they could. They knew they could have success if they kept, you know, getting at it, you know, in the second half and the fourth quarter, and they did. Um, and um, I, I don't think Tank was still 100, percent but boy, he sure is good, man. He breaks tackles. He has that little, that little quick step he does when he gets in the open field. He just makes people miss badly. And um, he's, just, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing him a year from now when he's had a full off season and he's healthy. He's gonna, he's gonna be one of those. Backs that breaks off those 70, 80 yard runs. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be a lot of fun. And he, you know, he, uh, for those that didn't see, he moved into second all time in freshman uh, rushing at Auburn, past Bo Jackson for second now. He's got like, um, he's got over 800 yards this season now. And he's just trailing um, Dyer, right? Uh, Mike Dyer. Yeah. Mike Dyer has, uh, I think, 1,093 uh, was his record uh, back in, what was it, 2009? Been so long, I can't remember. No, it was 10, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a freshman on the national championship team. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So 2010, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, that was so that was 14 games. Uh, and look, Tank's done this in 10. Yeah, Tank's – he's a bad man. Uh, he's a better tailback than Mike Dyer, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Bo Nix, man, another kind of weird performance, not good. And at some point we've got to kind of figure out that he, he's just not as good this year. And I, I'm not – I don't want to blame him personally, but – are you mystified that he doesn't come out in this game and, and have a decent performance? Because they're, they're, a little look, bit. Mississippi State's a good run defense, but pass defense, eh, kind of okay. Yeah, I mean, before that fourth quarter, 
Uh, Bo was 12 of 28 for 61 yards. That is pathetic. And I think what happened early was Mississippi State pressured him a lot, um, and he, he he rushed out of the pocket a lot. And once that started to happen, then even when they didn't get pressure, he was still bailing. You know, we've seen that uh, in two or three games this season where uh, once he starts getting pressured, he starts feeling it even before it's there. But I thought he settled down. And then suddenly, you know, that flip switch, um, the, the script flipped. In the fourth quarter, he goes three or four for, you know, uh, 100 yards or so. In the fourth quarter, he makes that great pass to Seth Williams on third and seven, you know, down there at the five or, or seven or eight, wherever they were at the time. And then uh, it was third and 14, I think, uh, down there in the red zone. And then he hit Seth Williams again for the touchdown. Two perfect passes, uh, two great plays this afternoon. I don't know. I don't know who put on Twitter, but I think before those that drive, I think um, uh, Nick had targeted Seth like seven or eight times and completed like one pass for zero yards or something. Yeah. Some crazy stuff like that. I couldn't find it again to, um, to, to look at it. But, yeah, it was not, not good. And you thought, oh, you know. And then for them just to turn it around like that was pretty amazing to me. All right, so overall, I mean, they they go on the road, they get the they get the job done, they get the W, they win yeah. by two touchdowns. And and from your perspective, do you think that he's going to get run tomorrow? I do not. I think it's it, unless they've got somebody to uh, run right back in almost immediately. I think it would be a poor decision to fire a coach three days before signing day. So, um, and then maybe they have things lined up, but uh, you know, I have no reason to believe that at the moment. So, do you think so they would? We shall fi- see. Do you think they would fire him a week from now or two weeks from now? Do you think if he gets through tomorrow that he's good? Um, I, I, I think if he gets through tomorrow, he's good for for now. Could it happen later on? Sure, absolutely. I would not totally rule that out. Interesting. You know, I don't think um, anything that happened tonight changed anybody's mind, right? No, I don't think it changes anybody's mind. I think everybody's mind was made up one way or another before this game kicked off. So Yeah, I agree. And I'm not sure what happened on the field. Now, I had, had that third quarter rolled into the fourth and Auburn lost. That probably would have pulled some more people. Uh, that probably would have changed some minds, right, in the yeah. wrong direction as far as Gus is concerned. But I don't think anybody's mind has changed one bit after tonight, even though it looked pretty bad for three quarters. It's uh, it's tough in the chat right now. Uh, the Chase says, boo, be Matt. Uh, Jonathan S says, "BMAT will take a long walk down a short pier if they fire Gus tomorrow." <laughs> uh, Cassidy P says, not... "BMAT might be on the take." <laughs> yeah. Listen, I mean, maybe it happens, but it just doesn't make sense to do it right now, this moment. It just doesn't, unless you've got something lined up. Okay, if you're gonna do it and then bring somebody in right away to, you know, handle recruiting for the next three days or whatever it would be, yeah. Okay, fine. I just I'm not sure Auburn is good or smart enough to do that. I don't believe Auburn is. Auburn usually uh, screws these, these things up or or does them haphazardly. Um, haphazardly. So we'll yeah. we'll see. Yeah, you know, and it's I interesting. Mean, maybe maybe if you had the one guy running the show like you did uh, 15 or 20 years ago, yeah, that could get done. I'm just not sure this this um, administration and this board of trustees and all the guys that think they're in charge um, really are capable of doing something like that. You know, and to hear that uh, Alan, excuse me, Alan was on the pregame show with Andy talking about, you know, the financial realities of this COVID situation. And I, it just doesn't seem like he sounds like a guy who's ready to drop money to get rid of Gus. I, it, it just, yeah, it's starting to look that way to me. Well, I mean, you're talking about $50 million or so in the hole to start out with. You're still talking about 21.5 to play off, pay off Gus. Uh, around 30 total when you include his assistants, and then you got to hire a new staff. And uh, I think now they're planning to um, approve the final plans for the football only facility in January, February, the next meeting, I think early February. Uh, so that's what going to be another 50 million or more, probably, probably more. Uh, so that's a huge amount of money that you need to come up with. And you're already in the whole 50 million. And now you're asking to pay out another 30 just to change coaches and maybe more to hire new staff. So it's just not as cut and dry as people want to think it is. I know. That stuff matters, I right? I know. Yeah. All right, B Matt, you've done a hell of a job. You got a little more writing to do. You know. I do. I'm, I'm about to put up a story right now, and then we got some more writing to do. So it's going to be one of those nights. Digging it out, bro. And you got basketball, too, man. 
Was yeah, well, Christian did a good job taking care of that for us. And that was, we didn't mention this, but that was a really big win for Auburn. Memphis is a good team. Uh, it was a close game, and Auburn played really, really well, I thought, um, throughout the game. Played really hard. And, uh, you know, JP is one hell of a football player, isn't he? Wow, is he fun to watch. Basketball, you mean? You see it. Yeah, he is a good one, yep. And, I mean, I think for recruiting that's a big win, too, because Auburn and Memphis go at it for kids. And Yeah, that's right. BP can talk about were, that now. And all these national writers that were making fun of Auburn for, um, you know, taking a post-game, you know, uh, penalty or whatever, uh, you know, this team is going to be a, a NCAA tournament team at the end of the year. They're not going to be in it, of course, because they can't be in it, but I think they're going to be good enough to be in it by the end of the year. Damn. So all those national writers can uh, KMA. <laughs> all right, bro. Be mad. <laughs> it's been a good performance, sir. All right, I apologize to all people who are upset because I think that's the stand. That's just my opinion. I'm not, you know. It's not a big I'm deal. They just want to drown you. That's fine. It's not a big deal. It's, it's, it's a show of love. Uh, hey, by the way, they should always wish me a happy birthday. So I just took 12.01 a.m., so I just turned 50, 53. Is that right? You're a yep. 12. You're a, yeah, that's right. You're 12, 13, aren't you? Yep, 53. Me and Taylor Swift are celebrating. She's here right now. Would you like to say hey to her? That's big, man, a, a, a birthday for you. Everybody say happy birthday to Brian. Even the guys you've been saying mean things, you want him to fall off a pier. Even, yep, even the, girl, the, the guys that hate me, they can at least wish me happy birthday. <laughs> All right, B-Man, happy birthday, bro. <laughs> Peace out, man. See you, man. Bye. There right now. It's not like it. Not like 98, though. Hey, caller, welcome to the show. How you doing? Hey, what's up, Jay? Word. Who I got? This is burnt orange and navy blue. Hey, what up, man? Yeah, man. I haven't talked to you since. I guess it was last year's Georgia game. Uh, we spoke for a little while and all that, and I remember asking you about Chad Morris, if we were going to get Chad Morris, and now I regret that call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too, man. <laughs> I thought yeah, Chad you know, was going to be a... Uh, yeah, I, I just, it's the same thing. It doesn't look... It's, I mean, he just threw a couple slants in there. I don't think there's really any, any difference in him and Gus, but, you know... Um, I'm actually, last time I talked to you, I was stationed out in California in the Air Force, and I got some orders finally and got out of California, thank God. Got down here to Shepard now, and uh, I'm on NCOD duty where I have to watch about 300 kids just to make sure they don't kill themselves before they go home on uh, Christmas break. So I had to be here at 9 Central, so I missed the last half of the game, so I had to listen out on the radio, and I've been draining ever since, so definitely helped me get through. I'm here till 1, so... <laughs> I got a little bit more time, but I just wanted to kind of just weigh in on just the whole Gus thing. I think uh, I definitely fall on the same kind of side as everyone else when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, you know, I sat in the stadium down there at the Rose Bowl in 2013, and I, it, that, that second half, I think he lost it. I don't even think it was that first quarter at Mississippi State when – you know, Marshall came out. I think he threw like two picks on the opening play or uh, first two drives or whatever. And, you know, that kind of lost it when we came in at like two or three in the country. But it's it's time. The guy's got to go. I don't think there's any way of getting around it. You know, I was looking today and you look at us finishing six and four. We got beat by both the rivals, just like we do every year. We lost the game that we always lose to someone we should have beat in South Carolina like we do every year. Jay Lee saying nine wins next year. Well, okay, well, uh, what's the three losses? Alabama, Georgia, and then it's got to be LSU, right? Yeah. And beat them in 20 years, and we're going down to Baton Rouge. So what's going to change about that? Um, I, just don't, uh, I just don't see any – any kind of sunrise on the horizon here. I just, I just don't see any other way. Just look at – compare us and LSU, right? Yeah. Six and four, we finished the season, right? Lackluster, no enthusiasm, no momentum. And then look at LSU. They come out, they get 25 guys drafted. They come out on their high horse, get uh, knocked down by Mississippi State to open the season. They finish four and six, but with a win against Florida. Now, who's got more momentum going into next season? Yeah, I got an idea. Yeah, that, it's just, you know, how we're at six and four going into next year. They're sitting at four and six. <laughs> I mean, they're going to be just fine. So, 
I don't care about the money. I don't even care if we have to sacrifice this recruiting class. At the end of the day, you just got to do it. I don't know. I kind of get a feel of the crystal ball thing. I know there's a lot of that boulder's been rolling there on the bunker, but I just, he's kind of got like a, not necessarily a Chiswick feel, but just the head coaching record. You know, we hired Gene. It was like, what, 11 and 28 at Iowa State. And I don't know. I just don't know if he can necessarily win. I think, you know, with the coaching pool being so slim, obviously this year, I know Napier, the guy's a winner. But to me, it's got to be Matt Campbell. I know he's not a flashy name and, you know, he's playing out there in the Big 12, but the guy is clearly a program builder. Nick is not going to coach forever. I know we've been saying that for three or four years, like eventually he's going to, you know, head up to Lake Martin and call it a career. But, I mean, come on. I mean, he's got no more than four years left. I think he wants to get one more past the Bear and, you know, maybe play, you know, coach one more season after that. Um, I think Jay Lee's right again. I saw the graphic today. Kirby Smart is <laughs> Mart Rick disguised over there, just does a little bit more yelling. It's like literally the identical, you know, kind of record. So George is going to start, you know, hooping and hollering here pretty soon too. So um, it's just, we're going to have to just do it. Cough it up, do the money. Who cares about, you know, what it looks like optics wise. Yeah. Go out, get Matt Campbell, Napier, one of these guys, you know, and just call it a day. Get going. And you were saying you're at Shepherd, meaning uh, Wichita Falls. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, I, I went to high school in Oklahoma, so I, that's pretty close to Oklahoma. It's right near the border. Yeah, it's a lot better. I was out in the Bay Area for the hey. longest time, so I got out of there early March, right before COVID kind of really popped off, and uh, really loving it down here in Texas, man. Word. That's. I mean, I think of that's so. kind of like an open area there. Like, there's. It's not a big uh, – it's not built up. It's kind of – you still get some country feel there, right? Well, they have uh, the big college here in town, Midwestern State. Well, not a big college, but it's pretty much where all the kids that can't get into UT or Baylor or TCU and all that and rich families from Dallas, they send them up here to Midwestern State. But with Midwestern State kind of closed down, uh, it's an older community without uh, without the kids there at the college and stuff, but – Word. I'm married with a kid and one on the way, so I'm done oh, howling at the moon on the weekends and all that. Yeah, so. yeah. Congratulations, man. That's going to be fun. Parenthood's awesome. I appreciate that. Well, all right, man. I'll let you uh, get to a few more callers. Just wanted to call in, man, and uh, appreciate you getting me through these last couple hours over here. <laughs> you bet, brother. Hey, be good out there. All right. Yep, take care. See you, man. There he goes. Burn Orange and Navy Blue. We haven't had him on the show in a minute, uh, but, man, his, his call sure sounded good. Adam S., who's been with us uh, damn near wire to wire today. I don't, maybe so. He's super chatted as well. Says, hit that like button. If you are one of our viewers and you're getting something out of this, either you like the show, you hate the show, you think I'm a stud, you think I suck, you think Gus shouldn't be dancing, whatever, just go ahead and hit that like button. It doesn't cost you anything. It's uh, it's it's nice. It'd be nice to do. I am uh, reaching out to B Matt. I don't know if he fell asleep or what happened with Brian. Uh, can't get him. And I also reached out to Dr. Dumpster and, uh, haven't gotten back from him yet. Although sometimes it takes him a little bit to, uh, get back with me. So yeah, we had some good calls there for sure. Did I miss a super chat? I want to make sure I didn't miss one. Sound like, uh, burn orange and Navy blue, uh, likes, uh, Matt Campbell from Iowa state. I probably need to add him. I didn't, I didn't have him on the, uh, hot board that I uh, put together just in case you never know you never know I always gotta be ready gotta be ready for the subscribers I- I'm doing it for you guys hey caller welcome to the show how you doing Jay Jizzle what up what's man? happening bro is this, <laughs> is this my main man elite Gus yes sir good evening you, you do sound a little bit different on the horn but I kind of know now <laughs> And also, did you not have well, a uh, did you not have an enterprise represent earlier? I did, I did. Yeah, that's right. Is it is NWD is <laughs> MWD from Enterprise? I believe so. Oh, okay, if, cool. If if it's the same person, I'm thinking it is. Yeah. Oh, but, first uh, of all, congratulations to you and your wife on uh, another kid. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm actually staying up to. Uh, I'm watching this main event right now and expecting the baby to go absolutely nuts here shortly and. 
So I'll address that and then try to crash some. But uh, hell of a basketball game. And, uh, you know, love wa- love watching the young kids play. And a uh, lot of excitement, a lot of just so much potential. Unfortunately, I think uh, zero and, and, and 35, I think they're going to see their minute shrink pretty pretty heavily uh, as, as time goes on and as some of these younger kids, you know, continue to show improvement. Uh, you know, football – they're not going to shit can him. It is what it is. We flirt with this time and time and time and time again. Uh, the the unfortunate part, as, as you guys uh, articulated uh, earlier this week on, on the podcast, was, you know, we get into next year, and even if it's not nine wins, you still have the who's who of college football that in all likelihood are going to be looking for coaches. You have Texas. You have Michigan. You have likely Miami. Uh, there's some big schools that you'd be looking and competing with next year, whereas this year, you know, we're, we're probably the largest. So yeah, I would say so. It's going to be interesting. I think there's always going to be a reason not to pay the man, um, an excuse or a reason, however you view it. But, uh, you yeah, know, we'll see. At, at the end of the day, it's it's the same old Groundhog Day like we've said every time we've <laughs> – we have the brain drain. Uh, and you're Gus but, Proof, uh, by the way. You're one of the uh, Gus Proof posters on the bunker. Yeah. You know, I actually I got locked out of uh, a previous name, but uh, I, I've I've been one of the originals from way back. Uh, the the caller who was talking about 2013, I, I've, that's exactly how I feel. Uh, and I felt that way, and I've been pretty, pretty vocal in that, but it's really just uh, over the last couple of years, it's just become pretty numb. Like I didn't, you know, I just listened to your show and, and watched UFC today after the basketball game. Yeah. You know, I, I just have no real interest. Uh, you see so much, so much talent that you're just excited when they sign. And, you know, deep down that in all likelihood, they're, they're going to be squandered. They're not likely to get drafted and they're not likely to, to reach their potential, unfortunately. And we have, you know, a couple handful of kids that I think would fall into that category. Word. Uh, you know, hopefully that'll change. I, I feel bad, you know, for, for Bo. I think he's very talented. He looks extremely quick. I think if we took like a, a Nick Marshall type approach to our play calling, he, he'd be better. Uh, I'd take a lot more pressure off of him. Whereas I think for whatever reason, uh, we, we think he's, you know, this pocket passer who's, going to throw 50 times a game like Peyton Manning he's not that guy uh but as as I think it was Hunter said earlier you know footwork uh technique things of that nature appear to have uh diminished since since he came down to Auburn um same story for Kyle Frazier same story for Jeremy Johnson same story uh, I mean Jared Steno right I mean he he looked uh worse in year two so (laughs) It's just typical. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, you know, who, who knows? Who cares at this point? Uh, if, if there's a change, great. If if there's not, it'll just be more of the same, and uh, we'll chalk it up to a really, really poor decision that was made back in 2017. Word. But I appreciate what you do, man. I appreciate uh, the site, and uh, excited for basketball season. Hey, I appreciate so, you having my have back in Warzone, too, bro. You got it. All right, man. Revive you anytime. Sorry, see you, bro. Later, bro.